Give me a second. What is the length of a one second pendulum? Most clocks have two parts. Firstly, a frequency reference, something with a reliable repetition period, like a pendulum. Secondly, something to convert these regular repeats to seconds, minutes and hours that we use to tell the time. These days, most people use phones to tell the time, which takes signals from a real clock elsewhere. A team at NPL are building some of the most accurate clocks in the world. Their frequency references are precise wobbles within atoms. The NPL Time and Frequency team helps create a time signal enabling all clocks to tell the same time to prevent arguments. You're late. Well, I wouldn't be if you gave me my own mobile phone. We are going to build a pendulum frequency reference. Pendulums repeatedly swap energy between two energy stores. Gravitational potential, greatest when the pendulum is uppermost, and motion or kinetic energy, which is greatest when the pendulum is at its lowest. The frequency mostly depends on the pendulum's length. The mass on the end, the bob, has much less effect than you'd expect. A bob twice the mass needs twice the amount of force to move it, which is exactly what is provided by gravity. So it's less about the bob and all about the pendulum length. Your mission is to find out which pendulum length causes it to swing to and fro exactly once a second. You can make your own setup with whatever you have. We're using a book to hold a pencil rod. A grip gives easy adjustment to the 50 centimetre long piece of string. And our bob is a piece of Lego. The NPL worksheet gives some advice on all these parts. We realise the shadow makes it really easy to see when the bob is at its lowest point, when the bob's shadow crosses the pencil's shadow, so we use that in the counting. To and fro counts as one swing. Time ten swings. If the timer reads less than ten seconds, make it longer. If it reads more than ten seconds, you need to shorten the string. Continue until you get exactly ten swings in ten seconds. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. After several lengths, we got this, and we used best measurement practice of repeating the measurement a couple of times just to check it wasn't a fluke. Once you have a pendulum that reliably swings to and fro once a second, measure the distance from the pivot point, the string just under the rod, to the bob centre. Also, if you can, use weighing scales to find the bob's mass in grams. Share your results with us using the web page. Physics predicts the length, and we will post all about this on our web page.